Let's move on to question number two. We'll start with you, CJ. What is more valuable, acquisitions or dispositions? Your time starts, sir. Very simple, man. I'm a hunter. I'm a hunter. Acquisitions, 110%. It, look, it, dispo to me, it's like if caveman style. Somebody had to go out into the wilderness. Somebody had to forge the fight. Somebody had to find the food to bring back that meat for it to get cooked. You can eat red meat, man. Listen, I'm telling you, you got to be able to go hunt for what you want. If, it, if you can focus on acquisitions, you can always find somebody to dispo that asset. 110% for me, the answer is going to be acquisitions. Okay. All right. With 20 seconds left to go. Uh, let's go over to second place and last round, RJ Bates. Yeah, there's no blue genies on this panel, so I think we're pretty much all going to agree. Um, I think it's acquisitions, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's the control. That's where you decide how much profit can be made on the deal. Uh, that's where you have the controlling factor of the negotiations uh, and, and the amount of deals that you're going to be able to do. So I, I absolutely agree. I think it's acquisitions hands down, um, and it's – it's what I'm also most passionate about inside of wholesaling. And I think obviously Steve's probably going to agree with his sales training. So acquisitions, hands down. All right. Uh, Steve Trang, your thoughts. All right. So I'm going to try to argue the other side. If you look at some of the biggest operators in the country, right, guys that are intentionally staying behind the scenes, you know, you got net worth, new Western, um, Keegley, uh, they're obviously not staying behind the scenes. Um, who's the the guys in uh, uh, in Florida? Um, Oliver's company. Dang it! Um, but these guys are doing, you know, uh, property force. Property force. They're doing a thousand deals a year, right, or more. Some of these guys are doing a thousand deals a month. And the way they're doing it is they're focused on dispositions. They're focused on finding buyers that are willing willing to pay a premium. And you know, if you've got the buyers, you got the money then all the deals just come to you and you don't have to go hunt. So I'm just making an argument for dispositions. Okay. And Eric Brewer, bring us on home. Yeah, I think uh, Steve has a point. And certainly th those folks have built an entire business model around dispositions, right? They spend less than probably 20% of their total marketing budget on acquisitions and they dispo everybody else's deal. Their point, frankly, is, there's a hundred buyers for every seller and nobody's competing for the buyers. Everybody's competing for the seller. But I think the dangerous part about that is they run massive companies with huge overhead and have a very specific business model. For anybody that's listening to this call, you probably will not want to emulate their business model. Um, anybody that's trying to innovate in dispositions right now is because they stink at acquisitions. <laughs> and if I had to focus my energy, I would just get better at buying figure out how to get my deals on the MLS and it's the best buyers list in the world. So I would say acquisitions. Okay. The floor is now open. I but Steve the real answer cool. is you should do both. That's the real answer. Like the, the, but um, the way that it's structured is we had to pick one again for the longest time I've focused my energy on acquisitions and it's, it's served me very well um, because to, to Chris's point, um, when you buy the right house at the right deal, regardless of the market, there will be a buyer. And, and they'll, they'll be working just as hard to find you as you will be finding them. But you're going to have to buy it cheaper, I can tell you, than you did a year ago. That's the biggest difference. You actually have to get better at buying right now. Steve, I thought you had a unique perspective there. I didn't think you kind of got to finish. Do you actually think that dispositions is more important or are you just trying to argue it? I'm trying He's to have trying a different to somehow, point of view. Somehow like bring attention to himself by just being different. So I just want to, which I, I appreciate. I think that, cause the reason why we brought this up, right. Cause uh, I think that a lot of people right now are kind of wondering like, well, how do we move forward? How do we proceed? Cause you know, the, uh, a lot of the buyers that we've sold to in the past are all on the sidelines, not all, but like 90% of them are on the sidelines. Well, and they're think, just paying less, right. They're, they're forecasting the what the property will be worth in three months. And based on recent trends, depending on your market, it's going to be worth, less than three months or six months than it is today. Right. And they're being more conservative with their assumptions and they're either not buying or they're offering way less, which means they're not buying. Um, and what Chris and I were, or Steve and I were able to see at uh, the last Collective Genius is someone presented a tremendous amount of data that says, 
I don't know, it was like 50 or 60 percent of all the investment deals sold across all markets are to first time investors. And they happen to pay about 80, what was it, 87 to 90 percent of value, Steve? High 80s, low so 90s is the was, average percentage. Uh, a person that's, uh, you know, you talk about these seminar buyers, these guys that watch HDTV is like, I'm a flipper, right? <laughs> uh, I'm a flipper now. They watch zombie houses, right? On what channel, RJ? <laughs> and they're following what RJ says to do. Right? They, they watch RJ on, on zombie houses. Like, I'm going to go out and flip some houses. And they're the ones that, you know, they got a nice W-2 job. They got a down payment. They have the uh, financing to get qualified. And they want to get into the business. And the argument that was made was that if you have the resources to have, you know, almost as many dispo agents as you do acquisition agents and have them go find these people that are willing to pay more, now not only are you going to be able to have a larger percentage as far as a spread, but also have other wholesalers in your deals. I think, so I think, I, go ahead, CJ. Go ahead. I, I think sometimes you got to look at how to do simple business too. The reality of somebody becoming, you know, a Northwestern or, you know, something like that, the size of a dispo house, you know, a key glee, uh, you know, it's, it's probably pretty unlikely. I think that's pretty fair to say. Right. And I think you got to find how, so how do you only work a handful of them them nationwide. Right. So it's like, how do you find a way to work within their ecosystem? How do you figure out how to negotiate and buy your deals deeper develop relationships with some of these these companies like we just reached out to northwestern last week for some stuff down in in the in the texas area right and it's like how do we make our deals work now for them let them take care of the dispo portion of the of the you know transaction and focus on getting opportunities in so you know i still lean uh you know towards acquisitions but i i see what you're saying as well steve all right i got two things to say here first cj you called someone else besides me for texas we're not friends any longer <laughs> Second, uh, uh, to combat what Steve said here, because Steve's currently winning, and, and so I, I just want to prove him wrong here. If you've ever done business with New Western or, or Net Worth or Key Lee, they are constantly trying to acquire JV deals. Constantly. I mean, it is nonstop. They're in your DMs. They're responding to your email. You send anything out through InvestorLift, which I believe is one of our sponsors. Uh, yeah, on. <laughs> shout out. Uh, if you send anything <laughs> out on National Lift to a major city like Denver, Colorado, you get eight new Western agents trying to acquire the property. So, yeah, they might be moving those numbers, but they have a ton of new agents that are sitting there hungry with their buyers. But what do they need? They need acquisitions. So there's a shortage on a per agent uh, basis inside of New Western of deals for them. So it still goes back to acquisitions, even though they're killing it with dispositions, they still need deals. Okay. All right. The voting is still up right now, but it looks like the birthday boy is pulling away at 39%. Uh, we do got another shout out in the chat. Paul Sparks is in the chat. Hello, sir. Uh, and then he also had a comment that, I do want to highlight um, nothing about the program in particular, but yes, let's give a thought out to everybody who was in the way of the hurricane and everyone who was close by. Absolutely. Um, so we definitely got everyone on our on, on our minds and thoughts and prayers to everyone. So, uh, Steve, it looks like you're going to get a win on your birthday. I don't know if it was validated or if it's like sympathy birthday votes, but I'll take it any way it comes. I've got, it no, I've got no pride. I'm shameless. I'll take it any way it comes. There it is. <laughs> All right, Steve. 1-1, uh, you and CJ.